Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee Time with Mr. Yin. This is your host, Mr. Yin. And today, we're having tea. Tastes great. So today, I want to share with you guys one of the commonly asked questions of last year that I received, which is, how to increase your skills and experience in data science? Now, in the past, my answers have been all over places. You could do a GitHub repo, you could work on a project yourself, you can follow a textbook, you can get a nano degree, you can do whatever you want. So in this episode, uh, I've decided to put all those resources together to some of the following five tips that you can take to increase your data science skills. So let's start with number one. The first tip I would say can really take your data science skill to a whole nother level is to implement a project end to end. So what that means is commonly, if you're going through coursework, if you're taking machine learning class from school, the data is given to you. They're usually specific sets of questions that the instructor is looking for or the professors are asking, and you just need to hit on the target. That is not really the case how industry works. In practice, you need to be able to have hands-on experience to take on a project from beginning all the way to the end. That means you need to start with data processing, data cleaning up, data verification, and perhaps a little bit of outlier detection. And then after that, you can move on to constructing that machine learning model. Not only that, the machine learning model needs to serve certain motivation. It needs to serve, it needs to answer certain business question. These are some of the trivial details that I would say are really important and can set your project apart from just a pet project from school. During this process of going through your data science project, allow you to have independent thinking that perhaps in a school project that you're lack of. And this independent thinking is extremely important because everyone has certain sets of prior knowledge. You come from a different background than me, I come from a different background than him. Things change in people's life. And that prior knowledge will set you on a different path when you're looking at the data. And that small inspiration is exactly what you need um, to create new ideas when you're looking at the data, when you're investigating your own data. So number one tip I would say is important is to land on this process, right? You want to go through this entire process, trying to wrap up this entire cycle all by yourself. Now, in the beginning, you don't have a lot of experience. That's okay. Follow GitHub repo, follow course material, just going through the entire code. See where it gets you, right? Later on, I will say, uh, as your experience is growing, that you probably have certain motivational questions here and there, and those motivational questions can probably inspire you to develop a new data science project. And that critical thinking is precisely what you need to get yourself to the next level so that you are not just working on the pet project, you're actually doing a project that matters, that you have a story to tell. So that's number one. Number two tip that I almost never give people, which I actually think is the most important tip, is to create your own data. Now, not many people do this because not many people have a whole lot of data about themselves. Right? Nowadays, it's a digital world. No one writes journals anymore. No one uh, takes notes anymore. It's really making the second tip a little bit more challenging to execute. Take my personal experience as an example. I don't think that I will know myself that well. I will learn my mistakes that well about stock market had I never ever written a single stock market diary. Now, that being said, stock market diary is very different than the diary that you wrote at your bedtime, right? Um, it has numbers, it has information, it has links, uh, it could even be an Excel spreadsheet. So um, I've actually been collecting this type of journal all the way since 2010. Right? The first day I came to the United States when I bought my first stock, I started writing things down. I kept a journal. Every month management decision I've ever made, it's well documented. So. If I make a mistake, and I oftentimes do, I want to know why. That's data. That's data about myself. No one else has control of that data. No one else can learn from that data. I'm the only person that can learn from the data. So I will say that the second tip, if you can do it, if you have the passion for the certain topic, I would encourage all you guys to do it, to really collect your own data, see where you did wrong, see how you can improve yourself, and see what can make yourself better. Now, in terms of machine learning and data science, uh, it's a little bit different story than stock market, right? Um, stock market data is, of course, important, but it has its own unique characteristics. Uh, 
we cannot just oversimplify and overgeneralize our idea. In terms of machine learning and data science, what I would really say can be helpful is to keep a small table of the types of projects that you've done and the types of models that you've done along with those projects. In some projects, there are some data sets that perhaps there are some prior knowledge. Maybe someone tell you to just use a logistic model. Perhaps that's the only thing that you try. Great, let's write that down. That's the model that you try for this data. Maybe it worked, that's great. That's the information that you own. Sometimes in the future, maybe you work on another project and perhaps you have another set of prior knowledge. Someone tell you to do a deep neural network. That's awesome. Write that down. That's the model that you use for that types of data. As this list goes on, you're going to realize there might be a certain pattern. Certain data sets, perhaps certain models work better. Certain data sets, perhaps some models work poorly. And that's the pattern that you need. And that's the experience that you will gain. In a conversation such as a job interview or just an academic conversation with professors or an industry conversation with your business partner, all of these knowledge can be extremely helpful. And you probably won't get to that level of complexity had you not collect this data yourself. The next tip I want to share with you guys, it's really about academic reading. Now, I know that's a little bit complicated, right? Because not everyone can just open up a paper and read 50 pages in five minutes and magically understand everything. That's of course not true. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to implement and it probably is tailored to certain audience, but that's okay. I'm gonna share with you anyway. I oftentimes found keeping a good reading habit is extremely important for the advancement of data science career. Because think about it, there are a whole generation of data scientists out there. You are not the only one. And these data scientists are all out there, they're either working for some companies or they're publishing papers. They keep these models updated. Whatever model it is, whatever task that we're doing, so models and algorithms are almost always implemented and updated on a daily basis. There are thousands of papers published in almost every field on a weekly basis. And a common strategy for me personally is simply to subscribe to a certain author on Google Scholar, and you can set up an alert on your email so that the Google Scholar can just send you an email on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever you like, to give you updates of certain papers according to threshold set by you. So in some sense, you can kind of create this filter uh, using Google or whatever other resources that you like to give yourself feedback of what is going on out there, what is updated work by other people. Now, I think that's extremely important because data science advancements work as a whole. And it is oftentimes important to refresh your point of view by standing in other people's shoes. Because chances are other people have uh, different sets of data. Uh, they're looking at the problem maybe a little bit differently. And that difference is what improves us. But in reality, I understand that it's probably going to be very difficult uh, for you to just magically understand a scholarly paper. So what I would recommend to execute this third tip is to start with the authors that have papers related to the course material. So perhaps someone walked you through the models already and you have some preliminary understanding. And perhaps the same authors have published some other papers in the same field, just maybe a little bit advanced topics. Things like that happen all the time, right? If you're a leading professor in a certain field, let's say Yan Lekun has published a paper about neural networks and he can classify images into different classes with a certain high percentage. And a few years later, what are the odds that there's going to be an updated model that look at the same data set that does a better job? Chances are it's probably going to be a model come from his team, right? So that's what's getting interesting. Perhaps Yen Lokun has some model written in some textbook that got you interested. And then you start with a model in the textbook, which is something that maybe you're familiar with. And then from there, you're starting reading his paper. So that's one way I would say can perhaps get you start to roll the snowball without losing track on the mathematical notation or the theoretical complexity of the paper. This is kind of like a quick trick of getting yourself started with reading academic papers. The fourth tip I want to share with you guys, which is simply just to write it out, right? 
you can simply open up your own blog using WordPress or Google Blogspot to write out your own ideas about a certain model, a certain project that you have done before. The physical experience of writing out an idea in plain English and trying to um, organize the paper in a way, organize the idea in a way that makes sense to you is by itself a good practice to reveal the contents that you have learned, that you have just done. And I think that's quite an important process because what's the point of doing all data science projects if you can't really explain to other people, right? Whether it's in academic environment that you need to explain to the professors or your classmates, uh, and then later on, uh, you, when you publish a paper, you need to explain to the reviewers, right? Or if it's in the industry, you need to explain to your boss, you need to explain to your business partners, you're going to have to communicate the idea one way or the other. So I will say it can't hurt. And even it's not a leap to say that it's a good practice for you to keep up a good habit of writing out your own blog. So this writing and reviewing process is another tip that I will say can strengthen your idea, that can strengthen your understanding of certain machine learning projects. So that will be tip number four. The tip number five, which is the last tip, is what I would say the most practical tip that you can ever think of. And I actually miss out on doing this last tip myself in the early stage of my career. And this last tip is simply to work with others. You know, uh, when you have an idea, when you work out a project, hey, let's talk to other people, let's see what they feel. If you can explain to them, either you can teach the model to them or you guys can communicate certain results and you guys have that spark of idea, spark of a moment, now that's going to be what I would say the most practical way for you to get a good grip, get a good understanding of a data science project. And in doing so many, many times, you can potentially push yourself to the next level. So this last tip, working with others, communicating with others, what does it mean exactly? First, it could just mean you tell a story. In contrast to the last tip, which is to write a blog, this one suggests you to essentially say it. Well, you either write out with pen and pencil or you say it, right? So it's either writing or speaking, right? One way or the other, you want to get the idea out. So speaking is another way of getting the idea out. Uh, I've been in school for a long time. So in an academic environment, uh, I've been a TA, uh, I've been teaching students, been teaching colleagues about certain models, uh, certain machines um, that I've been developing, the first conversation is almost always, hey, how's it going? Can you describe what you're doing to me? And that always requires me to essentially give an elevator pitch of exactly what is going on for certain projects that I've done. Now, that's easier said than done because without a deep understanding of certain model, it is quite difficult to use plain English to describe what is going on uh, with something that's pure quantitative, that requires a lot of numbers, a lot of algorithm design, lots of change of variables, and it's quite challenging to summarize all of those in plain English. So the ability to be able to do that is another indication that you understood the topic well. So another way is simply to teach other people. That's why I've been continuously teaching other people. Since I like deep learning myself, so I almost always had like a part-time role with me to teach other people exactly how deep learning works. Uh, it could be through video or it could be through class time. It could be through whatever format that it worked. Since it's pandemic, so most of stuff is online over video. So I actually had the luxury of sharing the screen, writing things on my iPad to really explain to other people how deep learning model works. And throughout that education and explanation procedure, I actually realized that it turned out my understanding towards deep learning has gotten deeper the more times that I explain the topic. So that was quite surprising to me, even though we all know that, right? You explain something 10 times, of course you're going to understand. Um, but I didn't really completely grasp the weight of that sentence until I've done it. So that was quite interesting. And I'll tell you why it's interesting. I've been teaching deep learning for almost three years now, and I've taught a wide age group of students. Uh, they could be as young as 15 years old to as old as 48 years old, so almost 50 years old. Each age group 
has a unique set of life experience, right? And they live in a certain different environment than other people, than other age groups, specifically speaking. So in order to pass through the knowledge transparently to explain what deep learning is, to unwrap this black box algorithm to audience from different age group, that takes a lot of effort. It's not like I can just magically made up something and the audience will understand. No, it takes time. It takes time to understand the topic myself. It takes time to understand where the audience comes from. And that interaction actually allowed me to be able to explain what deep learning is in different flavor of languages that can be tailored to different age group of audience. So that's something I would say that me personally, I benefited a lot. So as this last tip, communicating with other people, teaching other people is definitely what I recommend all you guys to do to strengthen your understanding of certain data science topics, to strengthen your knowledge and experience of your data science career. So with that being said, thank you for listening. If you like the channel, give a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.